<laughs> I don't know what this is doing. Uh, it used to be you have to guess, but you really have to. <laughs> and we interrupt the 1% Club to bring you Irish Whiskey Review. <laughs> hey, hey, well, I, I was watching that 1% Club and uh, I was like, I have a I can't see that, I can't see it. So it would have been out, but I got the 1% question. So I feel I'm vindicated, I'm not as stack as tar, not as stack as I thought I was, you know? All right. Yeah. But, uh, no, quite like that show. Give, give us that question again. What were the th the three things that were trying to link? It was four words that um, they, uh, they it, what was what had they in common? So it was sonic, granite, mumble, and stone. No, it still wasn't on it. There was four words, but that was what it was. And it was the, old, the word could all contain family members. So that was, uh, what, uh, yeah, not, not as oh, thick as I thought it was. Mum, oh, yes, I'm with you, with you. So mum, son, granny, and or gran, and something else. Anyway, anyway, we're, we're, it's a whiskey show. We're not supposed to be talking about quiz shows that a lot of people can't see. But anyway. All right. Oh, yeah, that's true. Right, I've uh, got most of our audiences outside of the, the contiguous uh, British uh, Isles. So. Yeah. Well, Justin, I, I have to apologise, Justin. I have to make a wee apology. Because last week we were doing a whole thing about Campbelltown, the wonderful Glen Scotia, um, Springy Bank and all. Okay, yeah. And I forgot, I forgot, Justin, I forgot to tell you that when I was over there, I bought some delicious cheese, Justin. Delicious cheese made with uh, Glen Scotia and delicious cheese made with Spring Bank, Justin. It's dead lovely. It's, oh, wait, see, it's lovely and creamy cheese, Justin. Look. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. Don't be cutting yourself. Mm. It's lovely. lovely. Right? Mm. Don't be cutting. Was, mm. was it one of them for me, was it? No. Mm. <laughs> Does it go well with it? Mm. Does it? Yeah. There you go. Mm. That, that's a pairing gift for you. Yeah. Oh, uh, I all think right. it's that nice, Justin. I think I'll have another big, lovely, big whack of lovely, delicious. Uh, all right, cheese is lovely. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm going to report you to the Federal Communications <laughs> Authority, but we'll get to that later. <laughs> oh, lovely, Justin. Great on a bit on some toast. Mm. Melt it and all. <laughs> hey, here, mm. do you think he's awfully cruel to me? Patrick, <laughs> Darren, Paul, Linda, Sheehan, Kian, Andy, Sean, all the other people. We do, we do a list of all the other people watching. Oh, I can't, I can't, doesn't work tonight. Uh, well, do you think he's being really, really, mm. really cruel to me? Look at that there. Look at that cheese. Actually, that cheese looks delicious, actually. It uh, really does. Mm. Absolutely yeah. delicious, sure. Right. Mm -hmm. So welcome along to Irish Whiskey Review. We're <laughs> live on YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, Telegram, Twitch, uh, X, wherever you get your podcasts from. Uh, there's some exclusive content. And buy me a coffee, Irish Whiskey as well. And uh, our podcasts sometimes run ahead of this show. If mm. you want to uh, have a look, you know, we're a bit like iPlayer. The show might already be on another platform. So you have to check them all out. So uh, just search for Irish Whiskey Review and you'll find us. That's really good, actually. That's really, really nice. Just, I, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm playing with Justin. But oh, is... but Paul, Paul, Jane, Andrea says, I don't envy his dreams tonight. You're right. If you eat cheese after 9 p.m., you won't sleep. Actually, I had cheese last night, and I didn't sleep too well. I had a weird, really weird dream. Um, I have had two wee bits of it. You probably about half a bit. No, <laughs> only had that much. Only had that much. And here's Darren Flack. I, 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 I feel tormented. I'm waiting to read the fridge for cheese tonight. Yeah. Not, honestly, yeah. um, that's really nice. It's really nice. And you can't tell the difference between the two. So one okay. has obviously Springbank. It doesn't actually say. It just says single malt. So it doesn't say what Springbank it is. Uh, single malt, 16% mature cheddar. So I don't know. Is that 16%? I better not. It says 16% on the, the Springbank one. And then the, the other one's made with Glen Scotia 15 very it's just quite a high level of whiskey and a cheese, isn't it? It seems, I, 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 I don't know whether. I say a single malt, 16% mature cheddar. It seems quite, it'd be quite high. Um, Do you not think that means they use the, the like leftovers that aren't actually, no, it would, it would mean they would have to use the whiskey. Yeah, but they have to use the whiskey, and that, that's kind of the point, Justin. But it's um, very, very, very high, that. Well, that's what it says, it says 16% on the label. Huh, 16%, you see? Yeah, so it does. Okay. Now it can't be sixteen percent alcohol, otherwise that would be that would be 
some stuff. But no, um, it's very nice. If you ever get a chance of buying that, right. it's uh, very nice. Uh, You'd almost flip. think that level would sour the cheese or something like that there. Yes, Applewood smoked cheese does go great with scotch. Yes, mm -hmm. I have some of that down there, uh, Jordy. It, it is. Uh, mm -hmm. Let me see. Michael Matthews saying good evening. Richard McCurdy, it's a myth. Cheese at night will do you no harm. No harm at all. There's a joke yes. there, but we won't do it. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> we won't do it. Uh, we won't do it. Yes, uh, Zuckerberg gets us. Yep. Uh, Frank Hearn, uh, even though I must admit, like a bit of cheese with a wee whiskey. Oh, so do I. If, if I had any, if I had any. I know, John. I should have brought you back a couple of nice big things. No, but, um, no, no, no. no. Uh, you bring us back something from Isla. Let me I, see. A submarine, a nuclear submarine will do. I think I'm, I, going, to, I think I'm going to need one. <laughs> I think everybody's going to need one the way things are going. But, um, John yeah. Redmond is saying 60% cheese, 84% God knows what. It will be It'll be a cow's milk. Oh, cow's I, milk. The ingredients, the ingredients are on the back. Um... Cheddar cheese, milk, maybe milk, whiskey, uh, colour, and um, E160. This isn't America, you know, it's not for the GM additives. <laughs> we'll uh, be getting Zuckerberg done that too. Could really get a cheese or whatever it was going to be. No, it's, it, it, it's very tasty, very tasty stuff. So, anyway, anyway, hi, uh, we've got we had a good week this week. I don't think so. all will be revealed, but we had a good week this week on various, yeah. various fronts. And um, you're having a better week next week as well, an even better week. Yeah. Yeah. Should be, should be, um, should have. It would Is be it? a good week if you had a bottle of this in your house, spot, wouldn't it? Well, we'll do the news. I, I, I personally, I'd rather have the money if I'm totally honest. Um, <laughs> but Irish whiskey, big news this week is the uh, the other, uh, the next instalment of uh, the Middleton Very Rare Silent Distillery Bottlings. The, the 49 year old Silent Distillery Bottling out wow. of Cape. Now, I know it's for, it's just mad price and so on and so forth, but uh, God, if, uh, just look at it. I mean, it looks stunning. Um, it's forty nine years of age. It comes in a hand blown, hand cut uh, Waterford decanter. The boxes are all handmade by a guy called John Galvin, who's a cabinet maker. Um. And whenever you see them up, they, they do just look amazing. Now, the, the wood that's on it is um, tiger oak. So it gives this lovely sort of, that, that, that sort of patination or patina, as it's called, on uh, on the wood. Now, it is absolutely stunning. The, the whiskey, many people's ever going to open them and drink them. Uh, not very many. The box inside it, the box inside is white leather. All the boxes and the, the colours and stuff of the bottles are all different every year. So as it goes on, it's all little silver detailing on the on the, on the colour of the ball. It was distilled by Max Crockett, Barry Crockett's dad. It's 52.4% ABV. And this is the penultimate bottling because next year, um, along comes the 50-year-old. Now, price. You haven't seen the price of this, have you, Justin? I haven't seen the price of it. I haven't read the show notes tonight. No, but I, I tell you what, uh, it doesn't look like a crappy box, that one. No. There's been no put like this, there's no expense spared on it, and rightly so, because it's fifty five thousand euro a bottle. Ah. <laughs> so for best part of fifty K sterling. Um no, no cardboard, no cardboard being used in this one, Kane. No, it's it's, uh, it's not being used. Even beer. No, there's no no cardboard. Um, there there was trees had to die for this and die, yeah. but died well. As long as no lions died, we're all right. It, it does look stunning. That looks like what you call a burr cut. Can I can I show this yeah, one? I'll, I'll bring this one up, 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 up fully. I mean, look at that. That looks like some sort of. Burr of wood, and they're they are very expensive in themselves. As you it's get tiger them, tiger oak, it's tiger, tiger, but, burr, tiger oak, brown oak. But the um, craft craftsmanship in that is something to behold, is. you know. Um, that. I mean, it is ludicrously expensive, but it, it's it's for presentation, it's for showing off, it's for putting in a hotel, it's not for. It's not for sitting drinking around with your mate. It's okay. There might be someday some extreme 
billionaire or something's going to do that, or some whiskey group will, you know, 50 of them will put a thousand pound on each or whatever and get a nip each or something, something like that. But it's to put up and show off and, and have it displayed. Uh, and in that regard, it is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, it's just, you have to say it is just absolutely stunning. But, um, Yes, yeah. what, um, what do you think of that, folks? Will you be buying one at fifty-five thousand pound, fifty thousand euros, fifty thousand dollars, fifty-five thousand dollars, or fifty k? I mean, it, it's just a wee bit extreme. That's extreme. Does it come with cheese? <laughs> I, I, I'd like, I, I'd like you think if you bought one, that whoever you bought it off would probably give you. Uh, a, a bit of cheddar to take home with it. Um, I th I think if you if you popped into the friend at hand to buy that, I think Marty would run round the corner to Iceland and get you some Iceland's finest Canadian cheddar just I, just I, for giggles. I, I don't think any of them would ever be sold in the friend because you have to remember, Mister <laughs> Mister <laughs> Willie Jack does my sale. <laughs> he he ha he'll be getting one obviously because he yeah. has all the all the rest of the silent distillery bottlings. Um. So he's getting the full collection. So that that's this year's release, and it'll just look fabulous whenever he gets it in a, a week or two's time. Um, it is it is just an amazing thing, amazing thing. But so um, Paul's been asking there: Do you think the liquid inside that middle and very rare could justify any variety of five figure price tag? Mm. I feel that's a, a rhetorical question. Yes, it probably yeah. is. Well, uh, yes and no. I mean, let, let's let's think about this for a second. Because it's a 49-year-old whisk, Irish whiskey. In terms of 40-year-plus Irish whiskies, there's, I, I, I still think there's probably less than 2,000 bottles of any permutation uh, that has ever been uh, that is in existence. Now, if you take it that, if you were going for a 49-year-old Springbank or a 49-year-old Macallan or a 49 um you know some of the higher end uh, scotches. Well, they could quite easily be setting you back the best part of fifty k. Um, you know, so yeah, I know. I mean, it's not um, the, the scarcity of forty year plus Irish whiskey. Does it justify it? Well, if you're going to drink it, is anything really justified for that? Probably not. Um, you could certainly argue that, but. When it comes to collectibles, and let's be honest, loads of people collect the stuff, and you have to say, yeah, it does. Um, yeah. yeah, it really does. But um, hi, so that's the big Irish whiskey news this week. Um, it's it's just a fabulous thing. Speaking of the friend, uh, the friend at hand, um, they had a, a bit of a tasting today, or a bit of a, a, a promotional on today. And Jim put up um, the hinge. Very nice, very nice. Yes, uh, fifteen. So uh, I, I've got a little promotional bottle of Hinch fifteen. Uh, Sherry, it's the, it's the fifteen year old blend with the twenty two year old malt and the uh, fifteen year old grain content, and I'm going to have it in a, a little Hinch glass. See, so yeah, I had this last week, and it's very nice actually. And 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 where the other one's fifty five thousand euro, that the uh, Hinch fifteen. Is it sixty pound a bottle? There, there, about sixty, sixty-five pound a bottle, something like that. Um, so, so really, um, extremely affordable. Yeah, well, I mean, it's it's definitely a quality spirit with an age statement on it. Um, with a, these days, twenty two, anything with a twenty-two year old single, a twenty-two year old malt, <laughs> these days is always going to set you back a, a, a premium. Um, so yeah, I get on them. Uh, it's nice that they're releasing stuff. With age statements that these days is not ridiculous prices that some people seem to want to charge. But anyway, um, Linda Wonderful. saying, did you mention how many Willie Jack has? Well, he certainly have won. Um, I, I, had, I, had a, I had a tour group in yesterday. I had my uh, Viking tour cruise ship in yesterday. Lovely group, uh, thirty eight or something yesterday. Um, took them down over at your friend, had a look, and I was I was saying. Um, that the oldest Bush Mills ever released is a 44 year old. There's only 40 bottles of it released. The actual oldest that you can possibly buy now is a 36 year old Hill Street release that, that Willie has in the shop. You can only buy it in the shop. But the 40 bottles that were released, the older one, how many are they? Many out of the 40 is Willie bought. <laughs> Seven. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> and if he can I probably gets his hands in more, he'd probably buy them too. <laughs> so expect all 40 of them to migrate back to Belfast. <laughs> No. All right, there's Russ B uh, on, on a very mm. positive note. When the world uh, comes to an end, all the collectors will be a, a sad bunch of drunks. Well, uh, possibly, well. possibly. They'll have trade, put it like this. They'll have, they'll have uh, a tradable commodity. <laughs> Let's just put it like that. So, yeah, good on them. Good on yeah. them. I, speaking of collectibles, I bought a collectible last week. And uh, oh, Peter says it's 76. That must be euro a bottle, 76 euro, so yeah. probably about 65 pound. Um, sterling. So, yeah, if you haven't got a bottle of that, there's not that many of them, it's a limited release, so um, it's well worth trying to pick one up. Um, I bought this as a collectible. Um, yeah, hopefully, you can see wow. that. Wow, Murphy's Malt Irish Whiskey. Wow, now there's not a big lot known about this. Um, other than because of you can sort of date them by the bottles, and this bottle is from about 1900. That's when it was bottled. The bottle the, 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 it's either between sort of 1895 and 1905, there or thereabouts. Now, can you see them behind me? Mm hmm. Sole proprietors P. Murphy and Cole Balamina. Now, I don't know whether this is. A bottling that uh, Paddy Murphy did from Palomina. Um, but I'd really love to find out if anybody has any information on this or they know anything about this bottling, then please, please, please let me know because I would love, I would love to have a bottle of Murphy's of Palomina. And that would be, that would be sort of the highlight of my entire collection. Would you like to open that to try it? No, that's, that's not for opening up. That's for, um, okay, that's for. Admiring Justin, that's what that's for. But uh, yeah, uh, there's not that many of them in the world. Definitely not. So there's Paul, uh, G and Andrea. I'll be flying over to Belfast on the weekend that the Red Hot Chili Peppers are playing in Belfast. And the friend is hand is where? Is where I'll, <laughs> is where I'll be. 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 Yeah. Good. Um, if you haven't, if you, if you, that, there isn't. There just isn't anywhere like the friend of hand anywhere in the world. There just isn't. I've been lots and lots of places and there's nothing like it ever anywhere else. There's but not. yeah, um, uh, Paul, you'll be made more than welcome. Just come on over. You know, just let me check that. I want to do that. There, 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 there's whiskey places in London, but don't even come close to it. Yeah, there's there's nothing comes close to it, and that's that's the gospel yeah. truth. But yeah, um, so if anybody has any information on that bottle of Murphy's, please let me know. I don't think there probably is very much, but um, you live in hope. You live in hope. But uh, yeah, now, if anybody fancies a job in the whiskey industry, there's, uh, there's, a, whole pile. <laughs> there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, we have people, oh, that's right, because I've, I've, I've wrote that much stuff. I wrote down stuff and then I had to add other bits and pieces. Um, our friends over at Loch Lee, over in Ayrshire, well, they're looking a brand ambassador. Um, they, they also have their new cask program up and running, which is, uh, you can buy a cask of their stuff. Their stuff's very young, but it's very, very good. Very, very good. Um, they'll, they're one of the new ones that'll do really well. The branding's on point, the the, the story behind it, all of that's really good. Remember we interviewed them a while back? Uh, really nice. Game. Yes, we do have a video. If you check back through the old uh, history of the, the Irish Whiskey Review on YouTube, you'll be able to find the Lockley interview there, stand alone. Um, the, the whiskey exchange over in London, they're looking at spirits advisors. So if you want to work selling whiskey in one of the the the, the best whiskey shops in the world, um, the, the, the whiskey exchange is looking at someone. Uh, Titanic, if you like there, Titanic, they're looking yep. at distillers. So if you want to get down and um, work with Damien, one of the nicest guys you could ever meet, he'd be the head distiller, you'd be working under him. Obviously, they're up in production. Now things are up and running, so they're looking at someone to get down there. If you have any experience, you can see it on LinkedIn. Justin set a link up. Um, uh, our friends over at Shortcross are looking at Brewer. So I'm taking it down and work with David and Fiona. Um, so there's a whole pile of stuff. Uh, so there's more and more of these jobs developing, and that's great to see. It really is. Because when it's all said and done, it's nice enjoying whiskies and all that stuff. But the fact that they employ people and they give work, and, you know, it, it's it's a great industry. It really is. Um 
I, I've met some of the nicest people I've ever met in my life uh, through the whiskey industry and through various bits and pieces. But yeah, so yeah, all good, all good. And the jobs mean that the industry's all on the up. Well, yeah, I, I, there's there's been a bits and pieces of bad news floating about for a, for a little bit there. But, um, I think they all. Um, I mean, last week I was talking about some of it and um, the, the fact that people are running up debts and, and you can see, I hate saying this, but you can see some of these whiskey brands, they're just not going to do it. They, 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 their business plan must just be insane because they're buying huge amounts of, of age stock at vastly inflated prices and then thinking they're going to sell it. Mm -hmm. when, people, when people, certainly over the last while, have been really under financial pressure. Uh, I read a report this week that says auction prices, and this is across the board, primarily Scotland, let's be honest, um, whiskey prices, the auction prices are now between 50 and 75% of retail. So the, the, the flippers, the guys flipping stuff over, it's kind of dying down because you're not getting what you're paying for it, which a lot of people will be happy enough. But what it means is less people will be selling at auction, and people and people be waiting for stuff. So um first sales probably drop because people think they can pick them up in the secondary market cheaper and mm -hmm. so on. So uh, there's a lot of guys around for a bit of a shock, but um we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Um events coming up. There's a pile of stuff happening at distilleries other than distilling. Um so we have afternoon tea down with David Field. <laughs> yeah. Now, Justin, that would be right up your street. I After know. I'm just thinking Saturday the 8th of June. I am free, Fiona. I am free, Fiona and, 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 and David. I will uh, short cross afternoon tea on the 8th. There's something else on the 8th, isn't there? I think there is. Is there? I think one of the other things is on the 8th. I, I'm I'm busy. I'm just... I, I, oh, no, it's the 8th of May. It's the 8th of May. The other thing's on. It's the 8th of May. The 8th of thing. May. Um, what's on the 8th of May? That's that tailing one at the custom house, isn't it? Uh, there's it's a tailing thing on at the custom house. It's... Now, I didn't know a huge amount about it, and Michael Caldwell as always comes to the rescue. Um, he messaged me to find out a bit more about it. Uh, it, it. It's going to be in the custom house, which is, if you haven't been, I've never been in the custom house. Um... I have, but not since it got it refurbed. Uh, it's, it's supposed refurbed. to be some sort of classy place now. Oh, I would imagine so. I mean, it's gorgeous on the outside. Uh, do but you know they do it very quickly. Do you know they actually used to um, mature whiskey in the basement? There was so much whiskey being matured in Belfast that they matured it in the basement of Customs House. The custom house. Yeah, that's that. That almost sounds like the the, the whiskey regulators in America keeping it for themselves. That no. no, no. Uh, no. Put it like this, it's in E.B. McGuire's History of Irish Whiskey. So, uh, honestly, that's the easy story. <laughs> but, right. um, yeah, but I mean, that'll be a nice event. So, what you find out is you'll be getting a taste of the small batch, the pot still, the Wonders of Wood 2, the Crystal Malt, which they've just brought out, the single malt, uh, the uh, Rising Reserve, and an exclusive bottling just for the event. And it's like £30 a ticket. That seems like a good deal to me. Yeah, yep. so, yeah. Yeah. Um, so yep. yeah, that might be a nice thing. Next up, we have uh, comedy night down at Dunville's, Ecklenville. It's next Friday night, I think, nineteenth, um, nineteenth yep. of April, in the Still House. They're having a comedy night uh, with Tim McGarry. Uh, if you haven't seen Tim McGarry, he is dead funny. He is dead. He does that long and the short of it. We gave it humour in here. We well, had on the show before. We gave it. had on before. Remember, yep. we did that on Halloween night. And he was telling us about Burke and Hare and stuff. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, that been that's in the Still House. That'll be yep. a good night. Yeah. Um, tickets for that are still available. Um, thirty pound a ticket. That's pretty handy. <laughs> that's a nice it night. Is. Out. It is. Yeah. Um, next up. Morn Jew, who's a little place down in uh, Ross Trevor, who um, they, they seem to be quite quiet, but they're plugging away and doing bits and pieces. They are. They're... They've touched base with us a couple of times, mm. and we have sort of ha tried to get them on, but it just hasn't happened for whatever reason. They, they, didn't they have a play out at one point in time or something like that? There was something like that. They had a. I don't. Th did they? I don't think it was them had it out, but it was. Something to do with them. Somebody it was something to do with them. I can't. I, I, I didn't see it, so I can't really comment on it. But there was uh -huh. a load of different stuff. But yeah, they have three gin and whiskey tastes in the evenings coming up. So lots of stuff going on. Um, 
And since we lived through COVID, all of that stuff, every time I see something, it makes me go, I'm a free. Unfortunately, over the summer, I'm just not that free. But um, And they're actually they're pretty reasonably priced as well, yeah. actually. I mean, a good night out, a good night out, you'll get a few drinks at it, a bit of entertainment, education, for what, 30 quid? 30, 30 35 quid. 30, I mean, 35 quid? Pretty, yeah. It's for nothing. It's yeah. for nothing. You know, so yeah, keep looking out for stuff. A um, couple other things. Dingle are starting to do tours again. Um, you can go on and see them because they were closed for some renovations. Port Ellen over in Isla, they're taking bookings for tours. Unfortunately, I'm going to Isla. I guess what, well, Justin? Port Ellen shut. No, they ha- they're not taking tours just yet. <laughs> All right. They maybe thought I was going with you. And it's, oh, it's they, yeah. they, must, they must have heard you thought you were coming. <laughs> Party plus one. We just shut the production, put the blind down, get the cheese out behind the blind, don't they? Just yeah. smell it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's Ellen, true. The, new that's distil- the, the old new distillery that's opened up in, uh, in Isla, uh, is, they're taking bookings now. So there's loads and loads and loads of stuff happening. So good on them. Oh, I, I, I'm, I'm for Isla tomorrow. I'm flying out tomorrow. Uh, for a few days, and uh, by on Tuesday evening. So yeah, I'm going to go and see a few bits and pieces, and go. Uh, I've got a couple of things lined up. So yeah, that'll be nice. Right, very <laughs> lovely. Very, very lovely. lovely. Next up, another bit of good news. Well, if you win, uh, Clonakilty. Kilty. I just still remember we got talking to them at Cork. Uh, Clonus Kilty are having their inaugural release. Um, there's a 460 bottles up for grabs, uh, 120 euro a bottle. Um, now the, I like this. 460 is the distance in yards that the distillery is from the Atlantic Sea, Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a bit of a weird. Okay. Yeah. I think it's two casks, if I'm totally honest. But that's what, what they're saying. Is is that? So it's like, now you have to enter a lottery. Uh, so this is only 300 balls available, so obviously um, the uh, other ones are being held in reserve, so 160 balls must be for distribution partners or uh, that kind of thing. But um, yeah, so I like the inaugural release balls. Uh, I think they're they're, they're nice. I, I was talking to Jim and friend, uh, Han, the other day, and he says, I don't really get inaugural release balls. I said, look, all these new distilleries, they want their inaugural release, they want something a bit special, presentation, charge a premium for it, blah, 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 blah. They're for collectors. The ones that everybody that is drinking that's really interested in is the second release. What are you charging me for the for your bottle, but your standard well, bottle? Well, that's a different thing. I, I, there's Polly said he understands why some distilleries also make gin to tide them over until their own whiskey is ready to be sold. I mean, but when your own whiskey mm. comes out, it is it is a, a cause for celebration, isn't it? Surely. Well, it should be, yeah. I mean, that's why the initial releases really should be, um, it, should, it should be presentations. These are, it's basically what you work for. I mean, I have no problem with people making gin and vodkas and pochi, especially pochi. I think pochi, there should be, the amount of pochi that's, uh, made in America under the, the moonshine. Um, <laughs> I mean, they sell shit loads of it in the States. So, over here, it really, if you want, if you ask Fanon O'Connor, who, let's be honest, is the, <laughs> the, the professor of all things uh, Irish whiskey, he would tell you that Botchin really is Irish national drink. Whiskey's a sort of byproduct, and uh, a, a, a sort of add on to, to Pochines. And uh, sure, certainly Francis Levy would. But, um, I mean, there's more of a history of poaching in Ireland than there is of what we would now call whiskey. Uh, so all those guys making that, good on them. I mean, everybody has to keep the lights on and they have to keep all the employees fed. Um, so, yeah. Very sourcing, good. Sourcing liquid, I've no issue with that either because everybody's done it forever. Um, we we it, got a, we got a lovely invite down there to a source product, but we're, we can't go to it. No, know, we, get, uh, we invite it down to to, to Busker, but over the summer, Justin, me and you just can't and, go. Uh, I I'm, can't go. We missed missed one a great one that involved food while you were away, and you know I felt <laughs> really sorry. You know it was Miss Michelin Star Chef while you were away, and I could I was going to oh. say you were coming and was going to eat both meals at row and go, <laughs> but there you go. And then of course we can't go to Stephen's Green on the twenty second. Oh no, twenty yes yeah, something like and that. That's for the Oscar. Yeah. Uh, we'll put it like this. Um, do, 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 do. Connor Kelly inaugural release 
125 euro, 460 bottles, 300 of them are going to be available. It's farm grown grain, hand signed box by the founder, Michael Scully, and it's going to be bourbon, Amontillado, and Oloroso. So, quite a complex uh, uh, maturation. They don't give much description as to what was it bourbon and Amontillado and then married or whatever, or whether it was three casks, whatever. They don't actually say. But uh, that's that's the, the flavour profile for it. So that's good news for them. I've put my name in, and uh, hopefully I pick one up. The okay. link's there, so put your name in. there. Go on ahead. Even if you don't want it and you, you want to offload it, I know a man that will want it. There you go. So. Oh, I, 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 but I'm not, pay, I'm not paying some ridiculously inflated price. Either get it the price is going to be or not buying it. All right. I've, I've wasted, I've spent, wasted, I spent all my money in this Murphy's ball. All right. <laughs> No, but it wasn't, wasn't particularly cheap, but I got one. Right. Anyway. Well, listen, we're halfway through the show. Remember to comment, like, and share. We're on YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, Telegram, Twitch, oh, Twitter, uh, DLive, wherever you get your podcasts from. Uh, always tag your friends in it, too. We're live usually uh, Saturdays, 10 p.m. If we're not live, there's usually a show of some sort goes out on the Friday, the Saturday, or the Sunday, or a recorded one. So something yeah. every yeah. weekend. Something every week. We try and do something every week. Um, yeah. Next up, the Shed Distillery. Um, has announced 10 million euro expansion plan. Wow, yeah. doubling, doubling, doubling things, doubling their capacity. Um, Pat Rigney, uh, who is the founder, says that they've spent three million in the last year and seven more to come, and they're going to double their capacity to 120,000 cases. That's that is. A, a huge amount for the Irish whiskey industry. It is. There's loads and loads of people. I mean, when you consider that Bush Mills, not that long ago, were celebrating uh, passing the one million cases mark. I mean, look at this. <laughs> look at the history, heritage, and size of Bush Mills. So these guys, little little shed distillery from Shambo Gin, um, Gunpowder Gin, uh, they're doubling their whiskey making capacity. Uh, Pre-tax profits was three point eight million euro. And last year they conducted twenty five thousand tours. You know that's pretty respectable. They're, they're not exactly. They're yeah. very very isolated. Yeah, um, way over in the far west of Ireland. I mean, brilliant news for them. Um, they even started in twenty fourteen, um, and they've just actually released a seven year old Marsala bottling. It's, they haven't sourced any of the uh, any spirit. It's all their own spirit. That they're releasing um something that they've said that they just want to do and they don't want to source in so i i take my hat off to them um I, I'm good on them you know drum shampoo i have a, i have a drum shampoo i i very sorry to say this i have a drum shampoo the original release in there that i've never opened um it's their inaugural release and they've released a shed load of stuff it wasn't like they've done uh, they didn't go down the route of the um very limited release stuff they want here's our stuff and it's 70 euro a bottle or something it was it was 78 euro a bottle and they, mm -hmm. and they pumped out um it's a good on them you know they're, they're they're doing doing lots of stuff right by the look of things so uh yeah here's to them good on them uh, other quick investment on a slightly different scale all the same is even in this um a, a part says in the in the the listing for this he says you know it's very big for the Irish whiskey industry. Over in Scotland, <laughs> Diageo have just announced that they're going to be spending 49 million up in English. You know, Diageo struggle with paying 50 million, do, 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 or they go 50 million, it's 49 million dollars, so about 40 million pound uh, upgrade. And they've just spent um, a shed load of money up there too. And they're opening the brewer distillery next door to it. As I say, they're. Uh, uh, it's the as you they do things on a totally different scale. They certainly do, certainly mm. do. Uh, but um, it's uh, you know it's looking good. I mean, if you can get twenty five thousand to go to, down to Shed and Drum Shambo, you, you're going to be able to get you know quite a few to go to Titanic or or Belfast McConnell's as well, well, aren't you? Well, the thing is, it obviously shows you that there's people interested in it, and there's, there's a market there for it. Um, but just to, just to pick that amount up where they are, because they are, I mean, let's be honest, they are quite remote over there. 
Um, there have been an awful lot more people coming through Belfast uh, in, a, in a week than we'd be going through from Shambo. So their, their marketing must be spot on. They must be doing that area right. And they put through 25,000 people. They must have the, the sort of layout and logistics done. Because you and I both know some of these guys do the tourism and you walk up with a group. No, no, we don't need to hear. We have to go around the back. Could you not 25,000 people. It's quite mm -hmm. a few every day. Mm -hmm. It's a lot. It's quite a few every day. And of Don't... course, they're going to be coming primarily in the summer months, you would imagine, yeah. unless it's unless they have groups of, you know, University of the Thirty Age and uh, Rotary groups yeah. and that sort of thing in the off season, you know. I mean, you and I both know you were loads of places you rock up with a coach and they're totally clueless. Totally clueless. Yep, they, they, don't, don't, they don't let them go to the toilet for, for an hour and a half. Well, yeah. I, I, just, I mean, they just don't even get the basics right. But to get 25,000 through, that's that's a lot of people for a, for a, a fairly small concern, you know. It so, is. yeah, good on them. Bad good news. Yeah. Next up, over in the States, I almost fell off my chair laughing at this the other day when I read this. Woodford Reserve. Okay. Big brand. Um, bourbon. Uh, in the, the same stable as uh, Jack Daniels and all that kind of stuff. And uh, quite a nice bourbon. Um, yeah. Quite pleasant. Lovely presentation box. <laughs> well, that's a special bottle. Uh, the normal, yeah. one, normal one's quite a nice bottle, anyway. Um, <laughs> they, they have been... A, a federal judge has uh, castigated them for using bribery, Justin. Bribery. Bribery, and it's gone all the way to the federal court, yeah? Yep. What happened was uh, they were going to hold a vote to unionise the distillery. Sounds like a good idea. Fair enough. As an ex-shop uh, steward, uh, I wholeheartedly concur. But the distillery decided that what they would do is to sort of head the union off at the pass as such, they would improve their wages, so give the folk more money, improve their holiday conditions, and give them free bottles of bourbon. Right. So, <laughs> so, it's, it's, so it's for the work. So it's like, you know. Well, let me get this right. What would the union be arguing for? When the I think would they would want more uh, money, better uh, conditions, <laughs> better and maybe wages. some product to take home for people for, at, at special occasions. Yeah. But apparently now a judge in the States has said, no, no, that, that's bribery. My head hasn't figured this no, out. No, no, it doesn't. You know, so if if it was the union was going to be doing it, I'd say, oh, uh, could we get uh, more money? Uh, oh, I, I did one. Uh, what about holiday, better holiday conditions? Oh, I did one. And any chance to get a couple of bottles home with them every week? Oh, I did one. <laughs> Not allowed. No, <laughs> it's, it's, don't be giving us money. Russ more. isn't bothered because it's bourbon. <laughs> oh, no, you honestly, it's just. Uh, pathetic it's absolutely pathetic but anyway as that's the news that i've picked out this week um good news all around especially if you're a high-end whiskey buyer because the mvr has appeared out but um yeah that's it's it's the highlight of the irish whiskey year at the minute i think right well it, it, is, it is it is um so so this week just ah uh, what i've done this week I own one of these, okay? I, a few years ago, bought, uh, back, in, uh, back in 2018, before the whole world collapsed, I bought a bottle, or a cask, sorry, of Equinville. And I decided at the time to buy pot still, because I kind of thought, at that point, nobody internationally really has a baldy clue what pot style whiskey is, Irish pot style whiskey. They drink it, they'll drink red breast, and they'll drink Jameson, and they'll drink all the bits and pieces. They don't actually really know what it is. So mm -hmm. I thought I'd take a punt and, and uh, buy a cask of uh, pot style down at Echonville. Now, for many, many reasons, for all, all manner of concern and whatnot, I've never got down to see it. Uh, so I messaged Jarlath uh, last week, who if nobody it don't know who he is, Jarlath. Jarlath's basically the face of... of he is watching. He is watching. He, is he, did, watching. Come, he did come in um, here, yeah. You couldn't meet a nicer fella. And he, he says, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll get that sorted out for you. Get that sorted out for you. 
So me and Julie jumped in the car, went down to Eggerville, and they had the cast brought out. Now that's me with the bottle. Go, don't be showing that one. That's the end photo. Of All right. Cast. So um, the cask, I come down, the cask's setting out, and, and uh, there, uh, uh, well, a couple <laughs> of wee videos. There, there's Shane saying sample for everyone <laughs> in the audience. I'm sorry, I'm not on Patrick Keaton's money, and, and if there was one underneath the seat, it's for me. But mm -hmm. I don't have one. I don't even have one myself, so there you go. No. So I got the cask opened, and uh, I've wee, a couple of wee videos. We do. We're, we're not going to show them in any particular order because we are, we are, with some videos. So I'll show you, there's five videos, right? I'm going to show you the videos and tease you, okay? Going to tease you. So Marty can, Mar Marty can talk. I don't know. <laughs> Justin, Justin's now away. Um, yeah. So I don't know what he's doing. I'm here. here. I'm here. So I'm here. So what, what what is happening here, Marty? What is happening here? For anyone who doesn't know, uh, Eckenville uh, is the guys behind Joe Dog's Gin, the guys behind, uh, the guys who produced Joe Dog's Gin, behind Dunvilles, and they've now taken over Old Cumber. And they do a, a pot chain and they, they do some other products as well. But Sheehan bought this old rambling county down mansion house. Um, I was going to drive up that way and then I thought, no, no, I have to go up around. So there's a big mansion house. It's quite historic. It's got old historic gardens and stuff. And when he bought it, uh, his wife was sitting in the, in, in the house one day and noticed that she and who owns it was was out with a digger. And when she asked him, what, what are you doing? He says, well, I'm going to build a distillery. Now, he had never mentioned this to anybody at that point. Um as far as I'm aware, I <laughs> started digging it out. So he built this distillery, and they were the first distillery built uh, in, in Northern Ireland uh, for a hundred and something years, 135 years, I think it was, something like that. Um, so, yeah, and they got it up and running. Now, I I kind of love pretty much everything Dunville's have done. Um, there's a few things that I don't think are as good as the rest, but that, that's... That's just par for the course. The Dunvilles have done. I love the branding. I love the whiskies. They they they've always done uh, the, the sherry finish, and that's kind of what they're known for. Um, the first people, as far as I'm aware, to do the PX Pedro Jimenez sherry in uh, in Ireland. I've said this a million times. I don't have a sweet tooth. That's why I don't drink sherry. I don't mind the odd one here and there, but. Um, it, it's it's when it goes to the uh, it goes past whiskey to become sherry. It's it's just too much. But they don't do that. They really really don't. Uh, that's just that's the wrong video. That, that's the wrong video, right? Uh, I want to show them all. I want to show them all because yeah, the they're all Julie's opening the cask would be probably the best one to open. Oh, okay, next. Uh, okay, we'll so see. this one. Anyway, that one. Now, when I went down, the cask sitting on the ground. And uh, my Julie was there. Now, it is a pot still. And what the guys down there have been saying is that when they release their pot still whiskies, which is the most of the stuff that they have put through the stills, apparently, uh, it's going to be under the Old Cumber brand. So I got Julie to open it. And uh, that's the first time it's been opened in five years. See you, Bridget. I mean, there he is. And you hammer up and down pretty hard. The game's damaging, so as hard as you can. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Then you let that go down itself, and you twist as hard as you can clockwise. You all right? If I was there, the cast would have broke. Yeah, you wouldn't have been anywhere near it. <laughs> <laughs> Up as hard as you can. No, my luck that forklift would have rammed the barrels behind it. Kind of rammed below. You may need two hands, you may need one. You may need a couple of times, but I will come out. Keep going. Yay! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. That's the cast being opened. Right. Um, there's a 200 litre cast bourbon um, a cast. So that's the first time it was opened. So then what you do is you put in 
the the the, the, the balance into it they, they put in is that it yep that in, and and that gets you to draw out your spirit so i was i was able to draw out uh, a sample you put your thumb over you put it and it causes yeah. a vacuum and uh, you'll need a lifts it up then yeah right down the bottom let it sit for a second I'll use it in to make this ground. Or you just want the sample of the string? Oh no, I'm driving. So well, that's, you that, that's more than enough for sampling. I, I, I was driving, so I couldn't really. I had a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit. Um, I suppose a new sample of hard work. Now what? So there's Niall, he's the distiller down there now. And he took a sample, or he took a, a measurement. And it's at sixty-one point one percent alcohol, Justin. Oh no, that's just right. So that's pretty good, isn't it? Well, it's uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's 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 banging, yeah. <laughs> it's it's absolutely um, spot on. Yeah. Um. Hey, Russ, Russ is saying I spelled something. Ah, you did, Russ. I'm uh, very, 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 very. Uh, out of the two hundred liters that's in there, I did spell a little touch, but I don't know. It, do you know whenever your kid uh, or, or, or family member, your niece or whoever you're watching, does really well at a sport or they're doing something, it was kind of like that a little bit. You know, there was a sort of element of, I, 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 I'm all, I'm all, I'm all, I'm all, I feel all sort of paternal over the head of this cask. Right. Um, yeah, it was, it, was, it was a bit odd, you know. Um, I don't normally get a bit watery-eyed over the head of this thing, but it was kind of... Strange, I bought this. I haven't I've been down at it. I knew it was there. Um, but yeah, so I took my sample in the tube, poured the excess back in, and then whacked the, 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 the cork back in. Wow. That, 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 I mean, that is a fantastic experience from what it is, isn't it? In itself, isn't it? It is. Um, no. <laughs> that, that is... Uh, what I've I brought home. So cask one three five 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 year old bald it. It's now sixty one point six percent. Hopefully you can see a little bit of the the char floating about in that. You see it floating about. Wow. And I I, I got this home. Now the, uh, they say what they always say is the, the proof of the pudding's in the eating. Um and it's okay having a cask. Uh, I know there's guys out there these days that are selling casks for for <laughs> well, let's just say really, really cheap. Um, the cask ownership programs they tend to be they tend to go sort of six to eight thousand pounds for a cask, which sounds an awful lot of money, and it is. And then you have to pay duty on it, and you've all these things, and and there's all this romance of you'll bottle it up and sell it, and you'll make loads of money and do it in your own brand and all that. It's not as easy as that. There is lots of, of, of sort of legalities. If you pull it out of the bond, you have to pay the tax on it and all that kind of jazz. Which, once you start bringing in tax and red tape, it takes the, the, that sort of fun out of it. But the thing is, you don't necessarily have... You don't have to do it straight away. You can think about what you're going to do with it. You can sell them back to the distilleries and they'll buy them off you at a profit. They guarantee you the, the seal and all that kind of jazz. But... If you're going to do that kind of thing, I do recommend you buy from the distilleries, okay? There's loads of boys out there trying to sell you casks for, uh, oh, you're going to make £8 million off a you know, cask and all this. Just nonsense. There is legitimate ways you can invest in these guys and let them worry about, but it's the same as any asset buying. You, you don't really own anything. You give it to them. They then put it through. Um, and buy bulk casks and you basically own a unit share of stuff. That's that's a totally different thing. So if you buy that, buy it off a cask, uh, buy a cask off a distillery, you do have that connection. You do have that um, thing where you go, I, I have a wee bit down there. They're, they're looking after one of my my casks. They're looking after that. And it, it just it's good fun having it. And I have to say, 
the, it's fabulous stuff. I mean, genuinely, I'm not just saying that because I, 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 I it's my own cast as such. It's very floral in the nose. There's bits and pieces of sort of spices coming out. Once you let it sit out for a little bit, it starts to totally change. And if you add a little bit of water to it, it totally changes. It ends up, I, I said to Niall, um, the, the distiller down there when he was tasting it, I says, so it tastes, it's got a suede element to it. That sort of leatheriness that comes on in, in, in the back end of it. Um, it's fantastic. Really complicated. It's only five years of age. And the, the finish on it's quite, um, it, 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 it's sort of short to medium. But the longer it stays in cast, the longer the finish will last. And it's just superb. Uh, I couldn't have been happier. Um, Julie was over the moon. She was over the moon at getting the, the, the opening it up. Um, because I told her I was going to do that. Uh, so she got to open it up, brought the bung home. So the bung's <laughs> upstairs. Um, oh, you, yeah. you have to put a new bung in it then, do you? Yes, yeah, yeah. we well, do. Yeah, you have to you have to put the uh, the bung back, you have to put a new one in when you pull it out. So, but yeah, it's lovely floral, little touches of mint coming through on it. Um, on the, on the tongue, it's quite cereal, and then all the way through to um. That sort of sweety leather element at the back, uh, and yeah, super. That's a sixty-one point one percent. Wow! But it doesn't start tasting like that. And if you add a tiny little bit of water to it, I mean, just the viscosity of it, it's just super. Yeah, um, I do love dumbbells. I do love Eklundville. I love. Pretty much anybody that knows me knows that I pretty much, I think everything that they've done is, is pretty much nailed on. Um, they win awards all the time. I love the brand and love the guys down there. They're just really, really cool. Very good. Now, two weeks ago, I managed to get a run down. This is what we were supposed to talk about last week, Justin. And then Marty made a complete balls up and got HD card. But anyway, we have to talk about the Pierce Lions distillery down in Dublin. Pierce Lions, <clears throat> uh, they don't make a huge amount of stuff, okay? Uh, they, they they have been making for quite a long time yeah, because they have, before they were in that location, they were um, basically in a shed. Yes, somebody on my Facebook mistakenly said that their stuff wasn't their own stuff, but it is their own stuff. But they uh, were distilling down in Carlo, if I can mind. Uh, down in Carlo, and then they brought the stills over when they got uh, St. James's Church. It is the most beautiful distillery. What they've done is, ah, man, it's gorgeous. And we, I, me and Julian went down, we got looking around it, we got talking to James, uh, who's uh, like a brand ambassador down there. I think he's in charge of the sort of Dublin PR and branding and whatnot. Um, we got a look around and a bit of an interview with him. Uh, it, it, there's four distilleries. Um, there's four distilleries just around a very short area in Dublin, right behind the behemoth of, of Guinness, just behind them. You have Pierce Lions, you have a Rowan Co, you have Teeling, and the, the DL Dublin Liberties. Yeah. Uh, the the, the uh, Teeling do a great sausage roll, a great vegan sausage roll, and uh, Peter Gobraith does really good taxi driving. <laughs> Me over, so yeah, he left me over. Um, and he also bought me a sausage roll. So good, uh, cheers, Peter. Thanks very much. <laughs> <laughs> the distillery is just unique. Um, what they've done is amazing. And if you go down at night, the, 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 there's a bit of a quandary. If you go in the winter, you don't really get the stained glass windows. There's not enough light, but you get to see the blue lantern at the top of the church. But if you go in the summer, you get the stained glass windows. Not really, don't get the thunder at the top of the church so much. So you problem solving, go twice. <laughs> Honestly, it's just... Justin, what do you do there? I didn't do anything. I haven't even touched the button. Somebody sent balloons to you or something like that there. I don't even know where they come from. I seen the wee thumbs up, you boy. He appeared. Th 
So I don't know who does that, but but listen, thank thanks very much for that. I think I think somebody <laughs> tipped us or something like that. If you want to tip us, there you go. Buy me a coffee, Irish yeah. whiskey. If you want to buy any of our merchandise, you can buy it there on this link. Uh, but I don't know what that is. I have no idea what that is. Uh, th those balloons or whatever. Uh, maybe it was the ninety nine red balloons that Nina had across yeah. Europe. I hope uh, it wasn't. <laughs> I hope it wasn't because. That song's all about nuclear war. <laughs> I know, I know, but I've never, I, I, I don't know, it was hundreds of balloons appeared there, and yeah. I went, who did that? So, so you... Keen Bowling, he says, um, fabulous place, really enjoyed the fact that the tour wasn't just about the stilling. Bonus says you can see the old power stills in the way. Yeah, they've renovated the old power stills down there as well. That, I forgot to say that. They're just up the, the road a little bit. Yeah. Uh, they were based in Carlo. Stained glass windows were just magical. The graveyard up the back is full of historical figures. Lovely place to visit. It really is. Um and and it's just a pity that the man himself um didn't didn't make it uh isn't isn't still with him because mm -hmm. I never got to meet him but he sounds like such a character um amazing man in many ways but he did a little video should have had it out last week <laughs> she was a little bit extended this week should have had it there last week but already made a balls up that Justin's going to play it now. So you find me down here in Dublin at what I can say, I think it's the most beautiful distillery in Ireland. I think it doesn't really have much competition in that regard. Uh, amazing Pierce Lyons distillery. Um, I've just finished the tour. Julie finally got down here. My ears are all right again. Um, uh, just done the tour here. I have to say, tell us all about this place. Just and uh, I've heard it, but I'll let you hear it. Yeah, well, look, it's a, it's a very special distillery. Um, Pierce Lyons uh, sadly isn't with us anymore, but he was a great man. And, uh, you know, he, he was the first man in Ireland to have a master's in brewing and distilling. Um, and then he became a biochemist, PhD, in focusing on yeast and fermentation and um, created a gigantic animal feed company called Alltech. <laughs> but before that, he was listed as a lead engineer in the Middleton Distillery when he worked for Irish distillers. Before that, he worked for Harp. So uh, he was a trailblazer already in the alcohol industry, set up his uh, brewery over in Kentucky and his bourbon distillery, and part of the dream then was to come home, to come home. and uh, set up a distillery here in Ireland, and what better place than in an old disused church. Down in the liberties, I mean, this is, is was, and hopefully always will be, uh, associated with the drink industry. I mean, you've got the behemoth that is Guinness just behind you, a couple of other sister or friendly distilleries just around the corner now. Back in the day, this was... Like the, uh, the hub of yeah. Irish whiskey, let's be and uh, in Dublin anyway. Yeah, absolutely, and it's great to see it back. You know, so you know, Teeling uh, were the first distillery to open in Dublin since 1975, I think it was in 2015. Then we opened our doors in 2017. A year later, then you had the Liberties Distillery, and then the following year you had Rowan Co. So, um, you know, we're all kind of pally as well. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. particularly from a production side or from you know. It's a great community and we're all very different as well. Very. And that's the thing is that, you know, people can come to Dublin and in the space of a few hours, go to four very different whiskey distilleries um, and have a great time and taste great spirits. You guys are sort of the, 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 the newest of on the block as such, but you're kind of not because you were... <laughs> you were somewhere else before you were somewhere here yeah, and yeah. you should have been here two years earlier as well there's another story to that yeah, as well yeah exactly uh, we're kind of like a travelling road show <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, you know Pierce was very forward thinking and uh, he knew if we're creating an Irish whiskey company we need to get distilling so he brought his Vendome Kentucky stills to Ireland to Carlo this is all done on a handshake by the way <laughs> and on a mezzanine in O'Hara's brewery in Carlo we started operating and our first distiller at the time was Jack O'Shea. Yeah. And I think anyone in the whiskey industry knows who Jack O'Shea is. You can meet him everywhere. Um, and uh, when the church was ready to receive the stills, they were dropped in through the roof. And uh, we started distilling again there in 2017. So yeah. we had uh, we have spirit from the Carlo site that's going to be turning 12 later this year. And uh, we have spirit that's... Uh, yeah, turned six. It's yeah. going to be turning six from the, the <laughs> from church me. site. So, but from the same stills. Yeah, you know. So, and those those stills came from Kentucky. From Kentucky, they're Vendome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Kentucky stills. Yeah. Now, I mentioned there you should have been opened a couple of years beforehand, but yeah, there's a bit of a story to that. How, oh, how, yeah. how come that got put back? 
Well, so <laughs> as soon as Pierce had bought the church, I suppose the word had gotten around, you know, and uh, the building and the site was listed as a place of historic importance. So a lot of the changes that he had hoped to make or to, to have ready, he was aiming for a 2015 uh, distillery opening. But um, due to, I suppose, the parameters that were put in place, it was a 2017 opening, which we all think is for the benefit because he preserved the aesthetic of the original church. Yeah, and the preserved the aesthetic, costs go up, time goes back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, the site that you're on is is unique because well, you've kind of got your own graveyard. Yes. Um, <laughs> uh, explain some of the stuff that's in it because well, it is, it's in, interesting on its own, right? Yeah, so we, have, we are surrounded by a graveyard uh, we don't own it. Dublin City Council do. And there's people that still have relatives in the graveyard. And they come in with their piece of paper signed by DCC. that they And we leave them alone. They pay their respects. Yeah. None of us are going down there on our lunch, you know, <laughs> having a Subway Sambo or anything like that, you know, amongst them. But um, uh, we do tend to it. The gardeners come in and look after it. We're all about biodiversity. Our distillery is Origin Green, gold certified, and we now have beehives down yeah. there as well. I saw, I saw this. I saw the beehives down <laughs> yeah. there. Uh, it's, it's, it's very funny, um, just down at the back here. So you're going to have, I assume, a honeyed Irish whiskey we, coming up. Yeah, look, it's 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 all for play here. Yeah, we'll have our own honey that we'll make cocktails with, or we might just sell out of jars. Um, but we did, we have there's, there's interesting characters. I mean, first of all, Pierce has nine relatives in total buried in this yeah. graveyard. Um, I mean, he was a Dundalk man, but his, his family, his grandfather, his uncles were Dublin-based. Uh, um, you know, we have the old Attorney General of Ireland buried there, Sir Toby Butler, yep. who was best friends with big, Jonathan big Swift. Big grave, big grave. Huge, that's the kind of thing I'd like And I go. Um, I want a funeral pyre, actually. I, I yeah. want a Viking thing, that's what I want. Yeah, uh, we sent down the river, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's actually cool. Um, and so there's loads of interesting characters buried here, and the great thing is, when you come to do a tour in Pierce Lines Distillery, every tour guide has their own favourite story. Yeah. They're not reading off the same script. It's It'll be a different experience every time yeah. you know, if you come. Um, in particular, we have a tour guide, Bernard, who, I mean, he used to work, um, he used to do the 1916 tours. I think he did Kilmainham as well. But his knowledge of the place and the history here is just outstanding. Yeah. Yeah. And he, he was doing some work a while back, and I think he found that James Power was buried in our graveyard, founder of Powers. Yeah. Now, the rest of the Powers family are buried oh, in the family they'll, vault. They'll, in the, oh, the oh yeah, they'll be mostly, mostly him, so. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, poor old James Power, <laughs> who started it, he, he's, he's with us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, we've got them. They've, got yeah. them. They've got them here. Now, in terms of whiskey, you guys, you guys have a sort of expanding range. You, you, you know, you started off originally at three. Yeah, and, uh, and now four. We have four. four, yeah. So we, we had what we called the original, um, the distiller's choice and the founder's choice and the founder's was a 12 year single malt and, and it still is but there's actually older content in it um and we had a whiskey called the cooper select yeah which was something of a happy accident <laughs> that was uh, it's gone now but it was a dream whiskey it was it was an 80 percent malt 20 percent grain blend kind of like your black bush ratio yeah and it was uh, left in sherry barrels for four years. So at the time, it was probably the most sherry-aged blend in Ireland that had come out. And you could just get it straight away. Yeah. Um, it only, I think, exists probably in somewhere, in, you know, in a dark corner in Ireland. Or you might find a few miniatures of it, but it's, it's astounding. But this is the whole idea of our whiskey. Small batches move on to something else. We created the Haypenny Whiskey range because... We created Haypenny Gin and we kept getting asked questions like, you have to have a Haypenny whiskey. Yeah. Sale. We did. And the Haypenny forecast, for example, there that's uh, winning lots of awards, master's medals in the spirits business and things like that, you yeah. know. So, you, you, I mean, you do have very different spirits. I mean, the taste, you wouldn't necessarily have a, a, a Pierce Lions flavour going right the way through because they're very different types and styles, really, of whiskey. Yeah, that, that that's actually. Um, yeah, that's a that's a great comment on that, I suppose. And the idea was that every whiskey would have its own kind of identity rather than this common kind of, I suppose, flavor. What I'm looking forward to now is, like, we have our five-year malt that we distilled in the church. When we switched over to pot still recipes in 2019 and we really went, <laughs> we, yeah, we went, we stuck to the guidelines and then we went off, yeah, off, off, the, off the rails. Off, off the piste. Um, what I found tasting the different new makes that we've had throughout the years, except for a repeated one, 
was a very common estuary kind of flavor coming through particularly with the pot still so when that stuff comes of age and that will be down to Connor Ryan who's our master yeah, blender he, mister he does everything <laughs> um, uh, it'll be up to him when he releases those and, and uh, very much looking forward to seeing if that will happen if we'll have that that flavour that carries, yeah, through carries all the way through in the, in the range. I mean, you, you guys, because of who Pierce Lyons was and, and the fact that he is a master of all that kind of fermenting and, and animal feed and the, the real sort of technical thing, you use your own proprietary yeasts. Yes. Um, so it's not it's not Saccharomyces cerevisiae. It's, it's one of your own... It's, it's our own proprietary... And we have access to... I mean, many proprietary yeasts, but thousands, all, thousands, exactly. And all tech, that's you know, that's on the animal feed side of things. That's what they they can provide for us, and we use uh, a proprietary brewer's yeast. So it's a very special thing that we can say that we do because uh, it's the same as if you go to Guinness, they have their secret ingredient, their proprietary yeah. yeast. We have the very same it's, thing. As well. I think it's sometimes you get a little bit overlooked because most people use the same one, but I. The way it was put to me one time by by someone who really knows what they're talking about was you create all the flavours at the fermentation and everything else is basically a refinement up until you put it in cask. Mm. Um, so this, people talk about the shape of stills and all this kind of stuff. And yeah, okay, that probably makes it a, a, certainly an influence on character. But in actual terms of flavour, there's the wee yeasts that, oh, that do the thing. Yeah, yeah, the yeast are the things that will produce extra congeners that, yeah. you know, will, will cause, you know, will give you those flavours, you know. We, I mean, from our wash, uh, you you get a lot of fruit anyway. What if you if you taste the wash on its own? What we did for a good while then is we let a little bit of a wild fermentation happen, a little bit of souring of the beer, and we just found that little bit extra of that lactic bacillus in yeah, there yeah, yeah. gave you even more esters. What we want, because we only double the still, is we don't we want our, a, a quite light fruitier spirit, even when we take our cuts. Uh, it's more of a top-heavy cut. When you when you smell the the heads, it's quite sweet. You can <laughs> understand the old poutine makers back in the day going, well, that, that, "That smells lovely," and then you know they're in yeah. trouble. But you kind of the distillers, I suppose, have the dice with death of where they take the cuts. But you want to keep as much of the top notes in with the methanol gone. Yeah, and that's the, that's the art of distillation. And that's what the, the skill of the distillers do. And Pierce and, and the people that have been uh, now you, your fermentation. You, you, you'd mentioned something earlier on to me that I, I found really surprising. I actually thought it would be the other way. Normally, when when, when you ferment and you, and you bring out your wash, it's it's it's, it's what, twelve to fifteen percent sometimes. You guys have kind of went the other way. Yes, yeah, just just seven about so about seven. Yeah, seven. I mean, that's basically a, a, just a fairly strong beer. It's a yeah <laughs> yeah like yeah it's a yeah it's you know like a classic kind of Belgian kind of you know seven percent um but uh, the decision was made uh, through trial and error that the flavor of the beer the flavor of the wash it's important to get it right at the beginning and there's so much mystery behind whiskey you can have everything set in place Mm. to try and get the best product you can and if you start from the very beginning and something tastes good from the beginning it gives you more assurance that it's going to be good down the line. Yeah. Same with the quality of the barrels that you're using, the quality of the stills that you're using as well. So we believe in getting it right at the beginning with, with the wash and a 7% beer has been fine. Our distillery is small. Yeah. It's not been about, you know, gazillions and gazillions. No, it's, it's, so we're, it's about making a, a really good product and uh, without sounding to braggadocious for anything the whiskies win awards year in year do. out and we're, and um a testimony to to that seven percent wash and to those distilling techniques our pierce genesis won uh best new release in the irish whiskey awards in 2022 yeah. which is a huge award for us you know yeah. so we're absolutely thrilled um i mean what you, what you do i really love your spirit i've always really liked the stuff i mean the, the first i think it was probably the batch one of the founder's choice uh, I I loved it because these lovely top notes just to start with, and it just just kept going deeper and deeper and deeper and th- until it was the dark chocolate. You know, you had those sort of almost bitter notes at the end. Yeah, which was really nice. It started really sweet and fruity and finished down here. Yeah, um, which I thought for it's a fairly young spirit and a new distillery have to have that level of complexity 
straight off the bat was 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 fantastic. It was really amazing yeah. stuff. Yeah, like the founders we recast into our town branch ex bourbon barrels, and the, you know you probably know the Kelvin Cooperage barrels are outstanding. Yeah, char level four. I think it gives whiskey such a deep flavour straight away, and I, I think we're very blessed to be using them. I'm sure many distilleries are. Um, the other thing as well is. Town Branch in Kentucky has the brewery across the road, you know, making Kentucky bourbon barrel aged ale and bourbon barrel aged stout. So we're getting ex bourbon barrels that not only have had bourbon in it, but sometimes they'll have either an ale in it or a stout. Uh-huh. And that's just something else. It's yeah, just so something no, more characters here. More character to it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Another thing in price point, and this is the thing, I, I say this all the time. Um, sometimes I think people forget that. If you want to sell whiskey to make it affordable, your stuff is actually really, really reasonably yeah. priced. It's very, very, very affordable and very and, and accessible. Um, certainly, your age statement stuff seems to be very pricey, very well priced as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and you know, pricing is a tricky thing to get right. Yeah, like it really absolutely. is. Like you really have to to uh, put your thinking cap on. But you know, we went towards having age statements on our blends, like the uh, the Pierce Five and the Pierce Seven are blended whiskies. To just guarantee a certain level of a premium, to, mm-hmm. you know, a certain level. Not that age is everything, and we were no, chatting about that inside. Yeah. Um, but just it's just kind of a guarantee of, of a certain quality that we're giving you. Um, but the prices are, are, are very reasonable, and I've seen our Pierce Twelve, which actually has whiskey as old as fifteen inside of it, uh, see a huge uptake in it because I think as a as well you have to look at the sign of the times. It's it's about eighty euros in different places. It might be yeah. more, might be less elsewhere but people are willing to part with 80 euros for a 12 year old single malt yeah as a gift you know it's a great it's a great gift you know um but yeah it's yeah, pricing can be tricky but i do think we're well priced no, i, I think i think you're very well priced um yeah. in terms of coming down to this distillery uh to just go inside it the stained glass windows the the beautiful chandeliers that are, are whiskey cask inspired they're gorgeous things um but you have to come down here at night to see the spire let up yeah it's just such a landmark now for dublin um you, you can see it from miles about you, i mean it's just this picture postcard beautiful it yeah. really is yeah yeah we um and that's actually the, the great um idea of deirdre lines and pierce's wife pierce's wife and uh you know she's got such an incredible eye for design and detail so the stained glass windows were her idea with the, uh, an Irish company, Art Glass, uh, based Oven, in Derry. Oven Derry, Derry. Yeah. And uh, the copper chandeliers as well that are inspired by your, your barrel staves and things like that. And then uh, we call it the Liberty's Lantern. And, you know, Paddy's Day can change colour green. Yep. Uh, Chinese New Year can be red. <laughs> um, you know, we could make it purple for whatever we want, but... Normally it'll be a teal coloured. That's that's kind of the colour of our distillery, like the the brand yeah. colour, I suppose. But uh, it's great, yeah. And it's ten tons of glass. And I'll tell you a funny story. We had a tour guide way back when who used to tell people it was ten thousand tons of glass. <laughs> until I overheard him, I was like, "Listen, you, you need to read the yeah, yeah. You need to read up again." <laughs> uh, yeah, our roof might be strong. I mean, we've got a new roof, and it's not that strong. <laughs> But no, I, I mean it's just a, a fabulous looking place. I, I, if you ever find yourself down in Dublin or or in and around this place, you've got all these distilleries. You can do a very simple trail round here. Leave this one towards the end, as it's if it's getting darker, you want to come and see the light up. It's just beautiful. So um, I, I love your product. I love the location. I think the tour offering that you do is totally unique. The story behind it uh, with, with Pierce Lyons. Uh, Anyone that knows me knows I'm my number one hero of all time is Muhammad Ali. And Pierce Lyons opened the Muhammad Ali Center in in Louisville in Kentucky. Um, and any association with Muhammad Ali is good for me. I'll yeah, do me. Yeah. Listen, I'll let you get back to work. We're yeah, going to head yeah, on. No then uh, <clears throat> get yourself down here and come and visit this place because it's one of the ones that you really want to come and see. All right. There you go, Murray. What what do you think of that? Yeah, uh, honestly, uh, it's it's a unique distillery. It is. Absolutely beautiful inside the the stained glass the 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 spy. Ah, it's just did, did totally you notice unique. did you notice the the sort of horse whiskey decanter on top of the bottle on the bar behind you? I was fascinated by that. Whatever that thing is, the horse whiskey. They they have a they have a whiskey bottle holder and it's just it's a horse 
horse's head on the top of it. It's in that video. Go back and look <clears> through <throat> it because it's. Uh, I, I never noticed that, Justin. I never noticed. Let, that. Let no, the, the Pierce Lions. The whole story behind it is is something else. Uh, a local guy, whiskey through and through, goes over, makes billions of. I mean, billions of dollars revolutionising the um, animal feed industry, then comes back, decides to open the distillery, back these kind of roots, and 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 has the most beautiful distillery in Ireland. Uh, it, it just is. Uh, there's loads of other really, really nice ones. Yeah. Um, I visited two in the last couple of weeks, and they are uh, beautiful, but there's not really anything like Pierce Lions. It's just unique location. really is. Beautiful thing. Before we go, better say hello to a few people I've missed tonight. Declan Boyle, hello to you. Patrick Mulkey, hello to you. Andy Tolland, uh, David Boyd Armstrong was watching tonight. We'll give you a mention a couple of times earlier, David. Alan Satu's watching. Uh, Michael Sully's watching. JP Brown, Darren Fleck, Liam Foley was said hello to you. Dean Henry and Thomas Jones, amongst others as well. If I've missed you out, sorry. Some weeks it isn't possible to give everybody a mention every yeah. time. There's yeah. Linda Cox as well. What, what a week. Guys, have a have a great week. I'm flying. I'm jetting off tomorrow. Justin, jetting. Jet, well, mm, heading to Port Ellen tomorrow. So I'm going to go and have a few adventures. And I'm going there. to Poland. So there you You're go. Going to Poland. Uh, you go. You go. Uh, end of the week. So, so the next two shows, I'll be in Poland. So we, we might do a live show. It might be a recorded one. Uh, you never know. But some you never. You never know your luck. <laughs> you had a te you had a teaser there of what was coming up in a couple of weeks' time. But uh, anyway, anyway, that's the way it is. Anyway. The, inter the internet gives secrets away. That's a great show. Uh, Catch us again soon. Remember to comment, like, and share. We're live on YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, Telegram, Twitch, and Twitter. There you go. Good night, everybody. Bye bye. Bye bye. Guys. Take bye,